D&D players have read it. What's the most creative thing you've seen done in a game? Part two. I know. Real creative. So, one of my D&D characters has a bit of a reputation for making some of the most absurd contraptions possible. She was not a gnome, she was a human fighter with 10 intelligence. The first thing this character did was known as the Death Barrel. So basically, we were in this town and we knew some cultists were gonna have a meeting in this alleyway to do evil cult stuff. So I went down to the shop and bought a basket of exotic butters, a blowgun, a bag of a thousand ball bearings, an iron pot, a net, several vials of alchemist's fire, one barrel, a spoon. So then I loosen the band on said barrel, dump the ball bearings in, along with about half of the butter. I then use the spoon to mix the two together, creating a barrel full of butter-coated ball bearings. I then go arrive early to the cultist meeting. I go on top of a relatively short building nearby, draping the net down so that part of it is still on top of the building where I'm standing. When the cultists arrive, I simply throw down my alchemist's fire into the net, setting it on fire. The cultists obviously saw and avoided the net, but that wasn't the idea. Since part of the net is still currently on top of the building, I now have a small wall of fire in front of me. So what else could I do besides use the blowgun to fire a stick of butter through the flames at the lead cultist who has just opened a portal? I roll, and of course, critical. He gets nailed in the eye with a flaming stick of butter, blinding him. Next, I take the barrel and throw it through the flame at the cultist. I critical fail, causing it to fly through the flames into the portal. It explodes, and a bunch of flaming ball bearings fire out of the portal, hitting a bunch of cultists. I spend a turn greasing up the bottom of my pot while the rest of the party starts fighting cultists. Before the fire dies down, I jump in the pot, keep off the roof, and use it to surf down the street and slide towards the portal. My friend, who is in the middle of my path, rolls 20 on his deck save to do a sick flip and jump on the pot with me, and we fly through the portal, striking and killing the creature that the cultist was summoning. And that is the story of how a barrel broke the encounter in which our DM was supposed to have us fight an extra-dimensional creature in an alleyway, because some idiot threw a barrel in the portal. Edit. Yes, the exotic butters was a Five Nights at Freddy's reference. I feel unclean, as you should. A DM of mine had what he called a critical miss. If you rolled a 1, then rolled a 20, you just had an impressive looking but ultimately useless attack just happen. I rolled a critical miss in a giant battle with 12 real players, firing two enchanted arrows at a gatekeeping enemy to try and quickly end the battle. The DM played it out something like this. Your arrows fly through the air at the target, only to have one of them bounce off of a sword mid-swing. The fire enchantment explodes in a flashy yet harmless display of fireworks as that arrow again bounces off the helmet of a goblin in front of the group and finally comes to rest in the middle of one of the helmet spikes. The second arrow flies through the battle, impressively missing everyone along the way. It moves in between the gap of an arm and shoulder of a man swinging a mace, narrowly misses another as he jumps having the arrow go between his legs and finally launches straight at the gatekeeper, only for him to yawn suddenly and the arrow passing in that narrow gap between his teeth. It finally lands center mass in a corpse on the battlefield, the ice enchantment on the arrow sending a chilling wave and cool minty breeze over the area. One of my friends was a wizard, and he came up with a very creative strategy. He would summon a ball of water and shoot lightning into it. He would then hover that ball over an enemy's head, drowning and shocking them at the same time. If necessary, my friend could create a really large ball and kill an entire group of enemies instantly. The DM eventually had to nerf it by giving it a lengthy casting time. At this specific point, we were taking just under a year to do a ritual to summon a demon because he was sealed away with an item we needed. Part of the ritual was pulling the still-beating heart at a specific time on the altar of one of the descendants of the original man that sealed him. Only problem, only one descendant existed. No big deal, apparently. The guy comes to us. Our party 100% knows we need this guy alive to do this. One of our party members chooses to do lethal damage a bunch and outright kills him. He was basically the only one doing any damage at all. Fuck. Uh, okay. Well, we have X amount of time still. We do some quick calculations and internet research. Using medical skills, we want to impregnate one of the females in the group with his sperm to create another descendant. Bam. Quest complete creative in that it sort of became a house rule. We were playing 4th edition, where you have standard, move, and minor actions. The players asked if they could interlink their actions, so I said yeah, but if anyone fails a roll, the whole thing fails. So they would do things like halfling sprints towards warrior, halflings move, warrior braces shield and tosses halfling, warrior standard, halfling lands on mob's head, dex check, then attacks with daggers, standard action. They would roll in sequence, and if any part failed, both characters whiff it that turn. It led to some really unconventional Rube Goldberg turns, but it was a fun and creative alternative that led to lots of laughs. I love an alliteration. There's a running meme at my table now because of this incident. 
I hate it. I can't put carpets, drapes, etc. anywhere because the players will fall into a fit of joking and horsing around. So the players were working their way through a pretty huge dungeon that had a sort of creepy science theme and belonged to a great old one known as <laughs> the one who watches from below. They came across a hallway with strange patterns on the floor and suspected a trap or puzzle. After some experimentation and one character receiving a bit of shock, they surmise that there's an electric trap and you need to move in a particular way to avoid being electrocuted. Instead of actually solving the puzzle, they go back a few rooms to a big chamber that had some massive tapestries, depicting a mess of eyeballs and worms and yank one off the wall. A few players then grab their character tokens and position them on either side of the cloth, moving them in tandem to simulate folding up the tapestry at a 1 60th scale. This was the absolute most hilarious thing to them for whatever reason. Anyway, they lug this giant thing back over to the electrified hallway and lay it across the floor in order to walk across it without any worry safely insulated from the zappies. Because they were too busy giggling and being proud of themselves, two of them fell victim to the other trap at the end of the hallway, XD. One of my personal favorites is from a campaign that a friend of mine was DM of and several of us were playing in. At some point, I don't even recall how all these years later we ended up in some sort of sewer system and encountered a slime or ooze of some type. We weren't that high level yet and didn't have much in the way of magic arms and items. What little we did have, we quickly discovered were not doing any sort of harm to the ooze or slime. Then we realized that the paladin had plus three magical armor, and we had about a 20 foot gap between top of the ooze or slime and the area of the sewer we were in. Proceeded to burn Dimension Door, fly, telekinesis, and other such spells on the paladin to put him in the air over the thing and let him slam into it repeatedly until it squished dead. I forgot the specifics, but the group had acquired some nasty acid, might have been part of an ooze, that they discovered was flammable. They were also able to collect feces, fire arrows coated in acid and feces. I was laughing so hard, I gave them both 1d6 fire damage, 1d4 poison damage, and even some splash. The Strange Life and Times of Sir Cornelius Pinecone III of the Pine Hill Pinecones. He is a bugbear who thinks he's a human. He was accidentally mistaken for the real Cornelius as a young child. The real Cornelius was the only son of some very nearsighted nobility who got lost in the woods. His parents found the baby bugbear and assumed it was their child, leaving the biological Cornelius to be raised by bugbears in the wild. Bugbear Cornelius grew up dimwitted and entitled. He is constantly at odds with the chaotic evil alignment of his true bugbear nature and the lawful good alignment he was raised with. So far in our campaign, Cornelius has convinced himself he is a wizard, faked his way to a law degree, questioned his own nature when an NPC called him a bear, and impregnated many maidens. He is easily the best and most ridiculous character I've ever had the pleasure to play alongside. Arrows of Ultimate Destruction this was before the internet was much of a thing, so I'm reasonably sure he came up with it on his own. Basically, if you stick a bag of holding into a portable hole, everything within a 10-foot radius gets sucked into the astral plane. Basically a death sentence if you don't have the ability to navigate it on your own. So you make a ridiculous heavy arrow slash javelin whose sole purpose in life is to hold open a bag of holding and shove a portable hole into it when the head hits its target. It's expensive, but it gets the job done. Just be careful to not prime it until right before use. You don't want to accidentally set it off. This comes from a story I saw on YouTube. Forget exactly where, may not have all the details right. Normally you roll 3d6, 4d6 drop one, or use a point buy system for your stats. This means most of your stats should be around eight to 12 since die rolling creates a bell curve. One player asked the DM if instead of the normal methods, he could just roll 1d20 for his stats. Of course, the first thing he rolls is a 20. And of course, the next thing he rolls is a one. So he builds a character like this. It's a goblin savant wizard. He stuck the 20 into intelligence. This guy was casting spells with a plus five modifier, very potent, very deadly. He had an intimate knowledge of everything arcane and of all history and spoke four or five languages. However, he stuck the one into Khan. His wizard started with two hit points and gained an anemic one hit point per level. He adventured by being carried by two other goblins on a stretcher since he was more or less barely alive. He role played as a god sent prophet destined to bring all goblin civilization into an age of science and magic, but his body could barely contain the knowledge and arcane power bestowed upon him. Hello, my delicious, frosty, darling little Tamriel style sweet rolls. Thank you for expending a precious attunement slot on this video. We appreciate you big time. If you're new here, welcome. 
May the lore we explored pour more into your board gourd than you can score at the store because reading for yourself is such a chore. Good lord. If you're a repeat offender, write a limerick in the comments for Rip Daddy. Best ones win a heart react from Rip Daddy himself. We're working on getting a schedule locked down for the next D&D stream. I'm fucking itching to play some D&D with my friends, so we're gonna make it happen soon. If you're human, go check out our D&D friends over at Adventurer's Coffee Company, link and coupon code in the description. As always, please sub for nat20s. Now go beam love energy into somebody's heart, and we'll see you next time.